This is where we left off in the previous video. So let's stop the server and let's restart it. So if there are any new HTTP requests, we can see them again from line one. Now let's go back to the books.xml file that we edited earlier and let's open it once again. And this time, let's try to add a file to this. So I'm just adding test.txt. So this time we are trying to read a file using XXE, but by using an out of band network connection. Okay, so let's try to save this file. And let's also create a file called test.txt because that is what the application is looking for. And let's say hello. Now, when we verify the results, instead of John, we should be able to see the word hello if this attack is successful. Now, this is not blind injection in this case because we are still able to see the response in the web page. But this is just a verification before we get into blind based injection techniques. So just treat it as a concept to understand before we move on to more advanced techniques. So what we are going to do now is we will upload this books.xml file once again. I will log out and log in once again. And let's upload the modified books.xml. And let's click verify results. And let's see what happened at the server. Okay, there is a mistake here. We have created the test.txt file within a folder on the desktop, but we have started this web server in the root directory. So let's navigate to desktop, blind xxe, and start the web server here because this is where the test.txt file is available. So I'm just going to go back and let's click on verify results once again. Look at that. Instead of the name John, we are seeing hello, which is actually retrieved from a file that is hosted on an attacker's server. This means an attacker can use XXE vulnerability to force the application to read content from a file that is hosted on an attacker's server. This is good because instead of a test file, we can actually create a document type definition or a DTD and we can force this application to execute that DTD on behalf of the attacker. Okay, so that's good. So now let's try to modify our payload. Before we do that, I would also like to show another concept. In some cases, reading entities like this may be not possible. The application may block this feature of reading entities like this. So what it means is you cannot invoke your external entity using this technique. So we will just get the name John back into the XML file. And we are going to use something called XML parameter entities. So in essence, instead of using these regular entities, we are going to define XML parameter entities and we are going to invoke that entity within the DTD itself. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. To define this XML parameter entity, we can use the percent sign here. So percent %xxe and towards the end of this DTD, right after this angular bracket, we will just invoke this entity. Okay, so we are just calling percent %xxe there. Now let's save this file and check if this payload is working. So once again, I'm just going to stop this. We can just keep it running, but I would like to stop it and see the requests from line one, just to avoid confusion. Now I'm just going to go back to this home page and let's log in as admin. 
and uploading this books.xml. Let's click upload. Successfully uploaded. Now let's click on this verify results button. Seems like there is an error, but let's see if the HTTP request is made. Let's open the terminal and see the web server logs. Look at that. There is a HTTP request with 200 OK response. So this is what we were looking for. We should be able to invoke the XML parameter entity without using the regular entities. So that's the good news. Our new payload worked. Now what we are going to do is instead of using this test.txt here, let's create a malicious DTD on our attacking system and then invoke it from within the inbound XXE payload. So I'm going back to this and I'm going to create a file called remote.dtd just to represent that this DTD is being fetched from a remote server. And, and let's create an entity and let's call it A. And let's use the keyword system. And as usual, let's try to read the file etc password. Now we are assuming that the application is vulnerable to blind XXE. So this entity is going to contain the contents of the etc password, but in a blind XXE injection, we cannot see the response by just reading this entity. So we will have to somehow send it to the attacker's server. For that, we are going to make a HTTP request with this value as a get parameter value. So to do that, let's create another entity. I'm just creating an other entity and I'll call it B. And within this, I'm going to create another XML parameter entity with some dynamic declaration. So I'm just going to use entity. Inside this, we are going to use this percentage and I'll call it C this time and let's use system keyword and within these single quotes let's specify the URL of the attacker controlled server. So I'm using HTTP 192.168.1.93 colon 4444 and let's just use a get parameter. It can be anything because it is just used to log the contents of the etsy password file within the server logs. So I'm just using a get parameter called content and we are going to use the contents of the entity that we defined earlier, which is A. Okay, so that should do the job for us. So let's close the entity B here. So we have everything in right place. Finally, we will have to invoke these XML parameter entities here. So I'm using percent B semicolon and percent C semicolon. So that's going to be our DTD file. So let's save the file and let's open books.xml and instead of using this test.txt, let's just use remote.dtd. All right, so that should do it. Let's save the file and let's upload this newly created books.xml file onto the web server. I'm logging out and let's type admin admin and let's click browse, select the books.xml file, click upload and there it is. Now let's click verify results and see what happens. There is an error. The entity name must immediately follow the person in the parameter entity reference. So there seems to be an error in line number two and column number 25. So let's go back to the DTD and fix this. I'm opening the remote.dtd file. And if you see this person C here, this is the one which is causing the issue. So let's replace this percent C with ampersand hash 
x25 semicolon this is basically the hex representation of the percent sign let me quickly show you that here it is this is the unicode hex character code for the percent sign so we are just using this unicode hex character code for percent so let's go back and save this file and let's also restart this server and let's click on the verify results once again we don't need to upload the books.xml file again because we didn't make any changes to it so let's click on verify results and see what happens interesting this time there is an error but the error is different it says illegal character in URL that's okay so let's go back to the terminal and look at that there is a HTTP request once again and the only problem we have now is exfiltrating the data that is read from the server in this case the contents of HC password file so let's see how we can fix that the error we are getting here is typically because of a new line character in the content that we are reading from the server which means HC password file contains multiple entries with new line characters because of that the content is not being sent in the HTTP request so one way to verify the correctness of our payload let's change this file to something that doesn't contain new line characters so I'm opening remote.dtd and let's replace this HC password with something like HC hostname the contents of HC hostname should not contain any new line characters so if everything is okay with our payload we should be able to see the hostname of the target server so let's close the file and let's try to click on the verify results once again there it is there is an error but within the error we can see that there is the host name of the server now some applications may not throw these errors so let's go back to the terminal and see the access logs look at that the get url has the host name of the server this is how we can exfiltrate data from the server now is it not possible for us to read files with new line characters there are other techniques that we can use we can try to create an error condition in the website so that it throws an error and along with the error the contents of HC password file will be displayed so let's modify our payload and see how we can do that let's go back to the remote.dtd file and let's change this from hostname to HC password And let's replace this second entity to have an error condition so we are just going to try to read a file which doesn't exist so I'm gonna give file three slashes and hello world so this file doesn't exist I'm just going to try to read that and that's going to cause an error so let's save the file And let's go back let's click on verify results once again and it should throw an error with the contents of HC password so let's click verify results and look at that there is a file not found exception but along with that we do have the contents of HC password file here this is how we can make use of unhandled exceptions to exploit blind XXE injection I hope you have enjoyed this lecture on blind XXE injection. That's all for this video. See you in the next one.